Yo, what's the deal, Wingo Gang? It's your boy, Anu Subs, a.k.a. Make sure you guys hit that like, comment, and subscribe button below. Look, I wasn't even going to do any more videos on uh, this subject, this topic, but I'm seeing a lot of hate being spewed. I'm seeing a lot of unnecessary um, energy being promoted. Um, people are entitled to their opinions, you know, especially about Tariq Nasheed and his tactics on how he addresses certain people. But it's really, from what I gathered is, Tariq Nasheed necessarily only goes at people that sides or goes against foundation of black Americans. You get what I'm saying? It's not like you're speaking as a general sense on everybody. You're speaking on a group of people that every time black people be like, oh, we need reparations or oh, we need this. It's like, oh, stop whining or oh, what about us and this and this. It's not about that. You get what I'm saying? Um, so I have, I have seen a clip that American Cholo had posted. I guess it was an older clip on the reasoning why he went into Tariq Nasheed the way that he did, right? And then he started talking about history. If anybody know me, they know that I'm a, I'm a history buff. I got books. I got everything. And it's not just my opinion. These are like actual documented facts. You get what I'm saying? So I seen that he started bringing up maps and just giving his opinion on it. And it doesn't seem like he really knows the thorough history behind it off the stuff that he was saying. He could know a little bit just on a surface level, but it seems like it's coming from a place to where you haven't really done much research on American history as well as um, history in Mexico and Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, if anybody know, um, it's a lot of history that it's either been un uncovered or or not talked about as much and and certain issues so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna speak about it we're gonna leave it up to scientists we're gonna leave it up to people um historians and stuff like that to explain but first let's get into the video where we're gonna hear exactly what american cholo was saying to Tariq nasheed and also the history lesson he tried to give us we didn't know what time it was or you were just speaking on the surface level to go with your agenda on what you was actually saying honey. And, it's, and again, this isn't to um, stir anything up. Much love and respect to, to all people because that's what I promote, positivity and knowledge for all. But at the end of the day is when you're speaking on something you don't necessarily know a lot about and then you helping it push your narrative, um, that's just a little iffy for me, especially when it comes to history because I'm passionate about history and I know a lot about history. Um, and that's kind of really my forte. All right, so let's get into these videos, though. And why do I call you a ghetto coon? Well, let me explain to you, carnal. See, a coon, for people who don't know, is a derogatory word that people use towards black people who they say act white. And that's usually what people say when uh, somebody disagrees with them and they're of the same color like black. Well, the reason I call Tariq a ghetto coon because that's exactly what he is, man. He's a black man portraying himself to be this Mr. Gangster, this Mr. Black Power, this Mr. F every other race. He's hates white supremacy. Tariq Nasheed never portrayed himself to be some gangster or anything like that. He 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 explained himself to be pro-black, you know what I'm saying? Or or a knowledgeable black man. And he's done a lot for the community. He started, he, he's put out uh, plenty of movies. He's actually bought buildings and, and, and you know, uh, museums that are being built. So he's doing stuff for the community actively right now. Not just how he's saying, oh, you're doing this for views. It's not really even about views. Like, bro, got movies and other and other stuff and other outlets. You know what I'm saying? Let's dive back into the video. Supremacy. He calls Latinos Mexicans. He calls us white Hispanics. He calls us all kinds of derogatory. Now, let me explain that to where when he does say the word Mexican, right? He's talking about, he's not talking about people that know exactly who they are, that push brown pride and, and all of this. He's more supposed to speak, so pe speaking about people who Hispanics call coconuts, right? To where they're brown on the outside or they're Hispanics, but they don't speak Spanish or they want to side with white supremacy and what's going on. And every time that there's a conflict or or anything like that, they're going against the black agenda and going again, um, you know, siding with either, you know, police, the government or anything like that. That's who he's speaking about. That's who he's calling. And that's who he's, he, who he's basically said American Cholo was coming off as one of those. So that's why he called him that. It wasn't like, oh, we're speaking towards every Hispanic person. And I think this dude is Honduran. Words and says all kind of stereotypes and tries to make them seem as they're true. All the while, this chump lives in one of the whitest cities in the San Fernando Valley. 
Chatsworth, California. 2% African American. But he's over here talking like he's in South Central Compton or Watts with the brothers put in that work. So first of all, he's a... Well, that's funny. Now listen to, to what Tariq Nasheed actually said about those comments, right? And it, it is like you associating the hood or the ghetto synonymous with black people. Like we're like just because we're black, we have to live in the hood. We got to be subject to poverty. That's where we belong. That doesn't even make sense. That doesn't make sense. Like, how are you just because he's black, he got to live in Watts or the projects or something. That don't make any sense at all. And again, we're doing this for educational purposes only to have a conversation and to dissect where the problem actually started from and how can we resolve this, man. That's all this is about. Chump for that, and that's why you're a ghetto coon, carnal. Now let's go forward. I heard about this guy a few times in my life. People asking me, I never really paid any attention. Sonny sends me a link a few days ago, and he tells me, start watching it from this mark. And he started talking about me, which is fine. People do all kind of stuff like that. But then he started going into the Latinos. He starts mocking Latinos. He starts making fun of our accents. He starts saying that all Latinos can't fight. He starts saying just that we, as Latinos, owe everything we have in the United States to the black man because of civil rights. Well, let's first get off into the stereotype that you're saying. You're saying all Latinos can't fight and the street Latinos only pick on young little black kids who have, uh, I think you were saying, have mental issues. Well, obviously, homie, you ain't from the streets and you've never been from the streets if that's what you think, man. If that's the case, I guess all blacks are lazy. I guess all blacks don't pay their rent. I guess all blacks have bad credit, right? No wrong, homie. And he's throwing like light shade, even even kind of bringing up these topics. You know what I'm saying? Uh, saying stuff like that. And it's like, okay, uh, of course, those are common things that are that are said, right? But you mention them right now in like a vindictive way. It's like, oh, you, what about this? What about that? It's just a, it's just a little funny, man. But the sad part is, you keep pushing that stupid ass agenda of yours because you're a fucking buffoon. Then you go on into talking about we as Latinos owe you, owe you all this and that because of civil rights. I want you guys to take a look at the picture real quick. This picture is from Latin America in the 1800s. You got from Mexico all the way down, brother, South America. And what do you see? You see places that have been taken over by the British colonies, the Dutch colonies, French colonies, Portuguese colony, Spanish colonies. In other words, by who we call now white supremacists, conquistadors. This is the 1800s. Let's fast forward 30 years. What do you see? I see a bunch of countries that became independent. We started... And what he's not mentioning in any of this is that in 1804, which is, in Haiti, which is a black country, gained their independence in 1804 and spread that throughout the colonies because, I mean, spread that throughout these Hispanic countries because, of course, we all know that there were black people in Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, Brazil, Panama, Honduras, all over these, all over these countries. And to say that, he's trying to basically say that they were absent. You get what I'm saying? Like, oh, they weren't there. It was just... You know, people that look like him. And yes, people that look like him were there. But also there was a strong black African presence amongst those same people. It's like we did it together. It wasn't like, that's what I hate. That's what I hate. Kind of like that separate, that separate thing, that separate aspect to where, no, it's inclusive to where we were helping each other during those times. And the video that I'm going to play after is, is going to address a lot of that. And it's not going to be me It's explaining. It's going to be um, historians. And we're going to dissect that and let me know what you guys think in the comments. You get what I'm saying? And like I said, this conversation need to be, it needs to be had because a lot of people don't look into their history. They say a generation that's without history is void. Of, um, they don't know where they're headed or where they're going. You get what I'm saying? So we need to understand this history, this factual history to understand how we even got here. You get what I'm saying? Or how the fact that I'm even speaking English right now. You get what I'm saying? That's not my native tongue or anything like that. The fact that um, Hispanics even speak Spanish or down in Brazil, they speak Portuguese. How did that happen? You get what I'm saying? Like that's, that's real life. Come on, bro. Prisoners of war. Our war for independence against the white 
slave masters, conquistadors, whatever you want to call them, in the 1800s, brother. By 1830, they were gone. We took our land back, Arnal. You were still in fucking chains. That's, that's what, that's, 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 have you heard of the Seminole Wars? Have you heard about the wars that happened in, um, in Florida and how we went over into Mexico and how the first, um, how the first, uh, president of Mexico was a mixed black man, black man that probably looked like myself. You're not missing this. I mean, you're not mentioning any of this, bro. It's inclusive. It's inclusive. We was fighting together. You get what I'm saying, bro? By you just saying it and not mentioning any, um, any actual facts, any actual anything, you got this map up and I feel like you, you probably really need to dive into history and how people are trying to like, it's like Jim Crow laws. You know what I'm saying? It's just to separate this person from this person, tall from dark, light from skinny, this and this and this. They'll be too busy fighting amongst themselves to realize what's actually going on. But you're going to sit here and try to tell me that we owe you something. We were breaking ground on freedom before any of you guys even had a dream. But yet we owe you. See what I'm saying? Before that was a Martin Luther King reference. Before you guys even even had a dream. Like, what are you talking about, bro? We've been over here since like 1500s. Like I said, there's been rebellions throughout that whole time. What do you think we were doing? What the fuck do you think we were doing, bro? And this is why it's like stuff like this does have to get addressed because people don't know their history. And not just saying him, just like, you know, uh, the black community, Hispanic community, they don't know their history per se. They only know what was taught in school that was written by, you know, an American dude that didn't want them to prosper. You know what I'm saying? We don't owe you shit, man. The only thing I owe another man is common courtesy and respect. And you lost that for me. The minute you started talking all kind of vile stuff against Latinos, against Mexicans, against anybody who has heritage of brown. Why? Because you're a ghetto coon, homie. You're a ghetto coon that just sits there and tries to push this negative stuff. And he acts like this, and he acts like there's no black people in Mexico right now. Or in Panama. Have you heard of the rapper, the, the reggaeton rapper Sech? He looks like Rick Ross. Bro. So you can get your views. So these brothers believe that, oh, this man's about it. You ain't about it, brother. You don't even know the history, brother. Before you... Yeah, and that's how you know he didn't really do history or or homework or background check on Tariq. Tariq's whole thing is history, bro. His whole thing is history. And I can guarantee you, if they set up... Not, no, we're not talking about no boxing match or nothing stupid like that. If they set up a debate, a debate where everybody had to... Prove a point, or what was the what was the topic? You had to prove that, and 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 bring up factual evidence, bring up uh, documented evidence. This dude, I feel like he would get lost, and there's nothing against him, but he didn't do enough research before he did. He made comments like this, and it, I, I know you guys watched the, pro, or probably you guys probably did it. The video that I did before, I was speaking on. Um, you know, I agree with a lot of this dude's uh, viewpoints. I don't agree with um, all of uh, Tariq Nasheed's viewpoints, and I don't agree, agree with all of his. But this separatism or trying to separate because of this or different ideologies, like people can live together with different ideologies. But at no point, let's say if you guys had a plight where something happened to you guys, we wouldn't we wouldn't be rallying in the streets or saying, oh, no, don't give them that. Why would we do that? So for you on your last statements to be going against black people getting reparations is crazy to me. It's crazy. It's crazy to show where your exact mindset is. Before you guys even thought about civil rights, we were out there fighting the white man that you're talking about. We got countries, brother. We got Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, Panama. Keep going on the list. Costa Rica, Brazil. We've got countries. What you we built America. Like, what are you talking about? What we have? We didn't, we didn't, we didn't come here to this country free of will. First of all, there were already black people in this country having relationships with the indigenous people that were already here. And that's a fact. You can look that up yourself. <clears throat> right? So for you to say, what do we have, bro? We got America. The White House was built by black people. This country, this wealth was built by black people, bro.
So what do you mean to say, what, what do we have? We're here. What you got, Playboy? What you got? All you got is a big mouth with no facts, homie. You sit there and say, hold your own nuts. Hold your own nuts, American Cholo. All right. How about you? When I look at the TV and I see those BLM protests, what do I see? I see a bunch of white people, homie. I see some Rasa in there. Maybe out of Kentucky and certain areas like that, all brothers. But the bro, Black Black Lives Matter Foundation was was. <laughs> come on, bro. Like that was an organization that the money went to mostly white people, bro. Like, come on, dude. The majority, nah. You should tell those white people, hey, go home. We're gonna hold our own nuts. But you won't, cause you're a chump, homie. All you do is talk out of the side of your neck, just for the views, carnal. We in this country have been fighting for equality just as long, if not longer, than the African Americans. When you guys were slaves, you guys would run. See, this is what I'm talking about, bro. You're not bringing up any dates. You're not bringing up anything. Like, of course, like, like it sounds good because you get to say it. And like I said, everybody's entitled to their opinion. To Latin countries, brother. But now you act like the only. Like, this is retarded within itself, bro. Like. Why are two people that's persecuted by the same person fighting amongst each other to, to say who's, um, who's plight is, is worse? You know what I'm saying? One slave fighting with another slave talking about, oh, yeah, I got it worse than you. No, 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 you don't. I got it worse than you, homie. What? That doesn't even make sense, dude. That doesn't even make sense. It, it makes no sense. The reason those Latin countries are where they're at is because of you guys. And I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying people like you, man. Bro, I just said in Haiti in 1804, Haiti liberated um, itself, right? Then they went to the Dominican Republic and freed them from the Spaniards. That same mentality went into other places like Puerto Rico and into the mainland. That mentality. Come on, bro. Ignorant people like you. You say there's no brown and black coalition and there never will be because we're just backstabbing white people? Nah, brother. If there's no brown and black coalition... And he didn't say that because I, I, I played it before. He didn't say that everybody. He says that coconuts or people that um, try to identify as white, right, go against black people. He didn't say everybody. He didn't say everybody. Because I got a lot, like I said, I, I rock with the Hispanic community heavy. You get what I'm saying? Heavy. One of my best friends are Hispanic. Come on, bro. Because of people like you. People like you, why? Because there's money in division. The there's money in calling yourself the black supremacist or whatever you want to call yourself. But really, you're just a ghetto coon, brother. You're just a ghetto coon that just spills nothing but vile, venom, garbage out of your mouth. You talk a good one, but you live in the whitest neighborhood in California. If you're all about that, brother, go live in the hood, brother. But you won't live amongst your... You get what I'm saying? Go live in the hood? Bro, who wants to live in poverty? Or who wants to live to where people are getting shot? Go live in the hood? Stop, stop making... The hood synonymous with black people. That makes no sense. Stop making the hood synonymous with black people. And stop making the hood synonymous with Latinos. Like, so you're saying that a, a black person or a Latino person can't become successful and want to do better for his family and then move to a better neighborhood. Because the way I see it, yes, you, you can do that. It, that. The objective is to move out of the hood. And then once more uh, more people become successful and move right next to you, boom, that's how it's done. Rising people up. But you saying, oh, why don't you live in the hood next to your own people? You, you using hood synonymous with black people, bro. Black people that you say you love and you're there to protect and you want better from. It's funny how that works, right? A lot of the ghetto coons do that. They talk a good one. 
They say, oh, this is for my people. Oh, I hate the white people. Oh, don't live like that. But yet, you're living the white man's world. You can get up and go anytime you want. You can go live in a black. We all live in the white man's world, bro. This is the white man's country. This is the white man's. Come on. We all under. Come on, bro. Neighborhood. But you won't because you're a ghetto coon, homie. You talk a good one just for the views. We've been fighting since the 1800s, brother. Like I said, you guys were enslaved. You guys didn't break those chains until 1865. And even. Bro, I just said the Seminoles. And the guerrilla warfare that was going over here, we've been over here since, since like 1564 or something like that. Do you think they were cool with their situation? Do you think they were just over here singing Kumbaya? No, it, it's, it's been fighting. It's been fighting, bro. Even then you're still slaves. Even now you're still slaves to the system, brother. And you keep thinking the way you are, you're going to continue to be slaves to the system, brother. You know, some people might say. It's like, how does he get to have an opinion on what we think and our mindset? He's he's an outsider. He's an outside looking in. Like at no point where I, would I give an opinion or or how an Hispanic person feels because or, 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 or something like that because I'm not Hispanic. You know, Gil, why even make this video? Why put it out there? I'll tell you why. Because I got a platform. I got a voice. We as Rasa have a voice. May not be the biggest voice yet, but it will be. But I will sit there and shout down any buffoon like this guy. Especially after I left a couple comments on his uh, page. You know what he did? He deleted me. I don't know if he blocked me, but he deleted me. Sonny told me I left a couple comments. I went back. They're gone, brother. And I know they were there because I saw him post. So this is the kind of chump that will sit there and act tough, be this big, tough guy, man. The BBG is what he's got. He's the big black guy. Homie. He's got the big black guy syndrome, homeboy. I've seen a few of those, carnal, and they told me to watch the water, homie. So all I know is I got my platform, carnal. Use a fool, use a chump, and use a ghetto coon. With that, I'm out. All right. So we heard, we heard what bro had to say. We heard the history that he tried to teach us, right? We heard him associating all of Latin America with him. Like there's not a black population in Latin America, but he didn't mention those people. He didn't mention those people that live in those same places. So we're going to get into a video. We're probably not going to watch all of it, but I want you to, and I'll leave the link um, in the description for you guys to watch it on your own. Cause this is what this is about. This is about educating. This is about spreading love, so we we can come to an understanding, bro. Like he said in his last post, or where when he went on on jumpers, is that we've been fighting for the last fifty years and got nowhere. So what is this on? Who's the better slave, or who's been persecuted more? That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense, bro. That makes no sense at all. Come on, the house slave fighting with the with the field slave, uh, the the Indian slave fighting with the Mexican slave, the Mexican like like bro, what are you talking about? That doesn't make no fucking sense. So let's get into this video so we can get some actual facts on the situation and you can see black people living in these Latin countries right now to this day, real time, not in eighteen hundreds, not in this. No, these are people that's living there right now, talking about their struggles against. Um, the white uh, people that still that still there. You get what I'm saying? The Hispanics that associate themselves with being white, that not associate themselves with being brown, not associate themselves with being black, but they feel that they're still white and they're subjugating these people right now, this day, in modern time. All right, Aneta, uh, lock the doors because uh, what I'm about to say. It's going to upset some people right next here. Uh, okay. Christopher Columbus did not discover America. People of African descent go back hundreds of years in Mexico, but as a group, Afro-Mexicans are largely invisible. 
ay, tú eres cubana, ¿no? Porque también ahí dices, oh, ta madre, el, el, el clásico cliché. During the Civil War era, black Union soldiers in Louisiana developed a relationship with Mexicans and Mexican Americans. After the Civil War, St. Mary's history professor Teresa Van Hoy says black Union soldiers helped to liberate Mexico from French control. After the war, they snuck across to Mexico to help Mexicans and Mexican Americans overthrow the French. Eres cubana o brasileña o colombiana o venezolana, de algún otro lado menos mexicano. In his diary of his second voyage, uh, Columbus tells of how the natives of Hispaniola actually had given him gold-tipped metal spearheads that they said were brought by black-skinned people who had come in large boats from the south and southeast. These spearheads were covered in this metal that... Uh, you get what I'm saying? He's 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 not speaking of actual facts, bro. Like it's been documented. It's been documented, bro. Like there's 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 really nothing you can say in you and your opinions to speak against facts. And this is stuff that Tariq Nasheed been knew. You get what I'm saying? So it isn't more so going against going against the whole diaspora. It's going against people that don't want to be inclusive to these people that are still in these Latin countries right now to this day. Like, why do you think um, uh, Azuna calls itself No Grito Hostados? Come on, the black guy with the light eyes. Come on, bro. This alloy that the inhabitants called guanin, which, dun, 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 matched the metal used in spearheads made in Western Africa for thousands of years as carried by medieval African warriors, including the Mali and the Moors. The West Africans even called this metal guanine, the same name used by the natives of Hispaniola. But nothing more was said about that. These murals are from the Temple of the Warriors at Chichen Itza. Now they clearly feature, uh, the color version is easier to see, but they clearly feature three races. And uh, there are, it's depicting black and Indian allies and a battle against white invaders. And because this mural shows that blacks are clearly fighting on the side of the Mayans, that they must have been integrated into that society much longer before this uh, this uh, painting was was done. There are numerous. Come on, bro. Before black people or, or whatever you were talking about, we've been on the same side before white people even came to the country before Christopher Columbus. And this isn't my opinion. This is just facts, bro. Numerous pre-Columbian figurines with striking similarities to ancient African artwork, and they've been found in Central and South America. In southeastern Mexico, there are 18 rock statues that of heads up to 11 feet tall that are facing the ocean. These people that they that they modeled them after must have been important. Whoever they were, they must have been uh, important to be re remembered or obeyed or worshipped. Uh, well, Jose Meglera Serrano, the uh, the archaeologist who first uncovered them, uh, he said he pointed out that facial features look amazingly like African blacks, and they all display distinctive headgear or protective helmets. Son personas afrodescendientes de todas partes que tienen hijos y que van dejando generaciones en en esta diversidad de lo que es la afrodiáspora. Dan Hoy says before slavery ended in America, slaves would flee to Mexico by following trails left in the sand by Mexican wagoneers who traded goods. Why would slaves cross the border to seek a This is a word hey, that's I more than my, a word. Um, I need my commercials, man. It's our word. Yeah. To seek asylum in Mexico, and the answer is clear. This is Vicente Guerrero, a Mexican man who was born from humble beginnings. Born in Mexico, his mother was an indigenous woman, and his father was an Afro-Mexican. That's right, an African born in Mexico. Vicente was born at the lowest level at the Spaniard caste system, a system designed to hinder Afro and indigenous from seeing the highest level of social status in Mexico. However, through hard work and fighting for his country, Vicente was able to transcend the caste system. He was no longer considered a color. He became a legend, the people's hero. The people loved him so much, they made him the second president of Mexico. That's right, a Afro descendant. While in exactly, I was just talking about this, bro. It's like, this is the history that they don't want to talk about, or no one wants to talk about for that matter, is that the, the Mexican and Black relations have been going back for years. But the problem always becomes those that want to... Um, associate with the dominant society as opposed to 
working together and building and, and doing what we got to do. You know what I'm saying? office he took steps to give the indigenous people rights and abolish slavery the very system that he grew up under this is why slaves flee to mexico so they could be free Vincente Guerrero is a true definition of a Mexican and also represents a group that I'm looking for, the Afro-Mexican community. Tell me, when you think about Mexican history, do you think about the African contribution? The truth is, at one point, there were more Africans being born in Mexico than there were indigenous and Spanish. But those numbers have dwindled through generational mixed unions and migration. Because of this, many Mexicans are not aware of their African heritage. In this documentary, I want to learn more about Mexico's African history history and hopefully find a Afro-Mexican descended community. Join me as I embark on an incredible journey. Let's begin now. All right, guys, so we're at the Museum of Anthropology, Jalapa, and this is the area where we're gonna see the Olmec heads. Um, a lot of you guys have been telling me about uh, checking out the head, so we finally here, and I'm with my boy, <laughs> Mr. Tay, Technology. 24 hours ago he was in Bogota and now he's here this guy likes to travel so make sure you check out his channel uh, but yeah we're here to find out the culture about the so I just wanted to skip that part uh, you guys probably already know about the Omex and everything like that now we're going to go to a, a city that you're going to see people that's living there uh, modern day right now I'm here in Yanga, Veracruz, Mexico, and I'm in front of a very interesting statue right here. Just to give you some history about Yanga, Yanga is considered one of the first free slave towns in the Americas. Might even be the first. It all depends on the different dates or how you look on different dates, but we're not here to discuss who was the first. Just know this place used to be a village where a lot of runaway slaves made home, okay? And so this right here is a monument of the, of the slaves right here. And I, I really like what the Mexican people did pretty much. They went ahead and uh, gave you the history. So uh, there's no real historian here that I've found thus far, but they went, they went ahead to show us some of the history and they put it in Spanish and English for those uh, people who are coming from America trying to learn about the history. So I really appreciate it. It tells you the history about the African people living here in terms of how this town got established. It's very important. They have no choice but to keep this here. The slaves that used to be here used to run the sugarcane farms and they broke away and formed a village right here. The history goes it was a guy from Angola, West Africa, who pretty much became the leader of all the slaves that were here, the free slaves that uh, made this their town. His name was Yanga. And so eventually this town now is called Yanga. I don't know if it's a town or a city. Uh, it's a town. Now, but there's also a, a bigger municipality. But when you look it up on Google Maps, you can look up Yanga and it'll, it'll oh, yeah. show us. A and he's not talking about blacks that ran away from America. He's talking about blacks that broke out of slavery in Mexico, bro, and went to this town. You know what I'm saying? This is this is history, bro. This is history. That's that's a statue of a black man in Mexico, bro. In Mexico. Maybe it's younger. I don't know. How it's I mean, it's a, it's surrounded by a beautiful scenery. Just coming here from the um, Veracruz Airport will take you like an hour and a half to get here. But uh, man, beautiful scenery. This place also was called Palenque, like the Palenque you've seen in Cartagena. But there's a big difference, uh, obviously infrastructure-wise. The inhabitants look a little bit different from this guy right here, which poses a question: Are the descendants of the Yanga village still here, and do they look differently? So that's what we're trying to figure out. I'm hoping to see if I can probably bump into someone that's willing to talk to see whether or not the hey yeah my grandma my great grandma was super black or my great grandfather was black yeah afro you know I want to uh, maybe that's possible here and also there's another statue so when you look online you see this statue this is another statue uh, I also want to check that statue out as well Hola. Yo estoy buscando ese... Ellos cambiolo? Yeah, yeah, I found, guys, I can't believe it. I found me Mexicano. Mexican American citizen. 
Mi, mi oh. familia está en West Virginia. Oh! Oh, your family's American? Yeah. Oh, okay, we, 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 we're trying to figure it out. Okay, we're close, we're close, but we're, we're, we're trying to figure it out. Yo aquí trabajo, acá vivo, yo soy escritor. Um, you write books? Yeah. 11 libros, 11 ejemplares de libros. You have 11 books? 11. El conformismo me hizo vivir acá muy, muy bonito. Se, es una vida muy de paz, de tranquilidad. Okay. Yeah. All right. No me gusta la ciudad para nada. Oh, he doesn't like bigger cities. He likes living in a, like He likes living in small, smaller towns. He finds a lot of peace here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's cool, man. What's your name, man? Brian Brown Johnson. Brian Brown Johnson. It was yeah. nice. Right. Yeah. That's if I don't know American <laughs> name. <laughs> if I heard one. <laughs> All right, my brother. Are you the only black guy here? Yeah. Realmente aquí hay un hay un sitio donde están mucha gente de raza negra mm. pero ya se está perdiendo un poco el cuántos negros aquí tú how many uh, brothers are and sisters here el original aquí negro soy solo yo okay only me right? toda la toda mucha la mayor parte de la de la de las personas acá mm. vienen de la raza negra so most of the people yeah. here in this area have probably come, came from um, the black race probably a mixture of Indian indigenous and Spanish um, people, but a lot of them are not familiar with their uh, their background. But he's black, though. I just saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're black. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. De hecho, en mis libros, en mi en mi con mi sabiduría, la primera humanidad que hubo aquí en aquí en la tierra que existió, todo el todo el ser humano viene de la raza negra. Todos, todos. Y, y, y en el transcurso del tiempo, toda la humanidad va a volver a ser negros. Se llama Mente Abierta, Buscando Mi Propio Yo, El Realismo de la Vida. Descúbrete, encuéntrate tú mismo. Get his WhatsApp number, and he, he says he's very solemnly uh, touches bases on um, technology. Guys, uh, I'll just do a little walk around so you can see a sugar cane in his hand just coming out of the whole sugar farm and just breaking free and then go bullet train is one of the best action movies of the year i can tell you twice My but it's also man. one of the funniest films of 2020 an angolian man um making it here all the way in mexico and making a difference. Interesting. Right, so I just wanted to see if we can uh, showcase the story here. Basically, this is a mural that depicts uh, basically the African's history here in Mexico, especially in the Yanga um, town right here. So this is the slaves right here coming on boats. And it's interesting choice. They put the Olmec heads here. These are the Olmec heads. All right, just in case you're wondering, it's here. They painted here, not me. All right. This is a uh, machinery that we're using to squeeze all the sugar cane juice out. All right, these are the slaves right here. Uh, this is their, their struggle. Like I said, this isn't my opinion at all. This isn't my opinion at all. This is in Mexico and on the walls. This is, this is in towns you can go to to this day and see this, bro. This isn't my opinion. So when, when American Cholo makes these videos just giving his opinion about something bro do your history bro do your history and get your facts because because you're not bringing up any facts towards that and like i said this is for educational purposes only so we can come to an understanding that look we've been we've been fighting together we've been subjected to the same kind of um same kind of treatment but the but the thing is we're letting the powers that be separate us and we're fighting amongst each other as as opposed to coming together or having an understanding amongst each other and not getting so offended when somebody uh, make a comment or somebody, um, you know, does something like that, bro. Here we go. Coming down from this area right here. They're moving, just trying to make it. 
so it seems to be like some form of fight right here and there's another story here all right this part was hard for me to understand but i finally got it so when the slaves broke free right they would stay in this area of yanga right and what they would do to uh, make a living is ramsack supplies that were heading to uh, mexico city so they would come here and take things uh, and you see what they were doing interesting um touch i want to know who actually took the time to paint this they also left some easter eggs here so that's very interesting and so they would take the supplies i guess free the horses and here and now this is their village coming back to their town the beautiful mural here but this this is what i was seeing when i was driving through hola is it too Yo estoy buscando afrodescendientes mexicanos. Oh my god. What? Can I give you a hug? Oh my god. Desidentes? Afro Mexicanos? Si? Si? Ok, ok. Bueno, so we have some Afro Mexicanos. ¿Y cuánto tiempo tu familia vive aquí en ese. Um, food to the other traveling tourists here. ¿Cómo estás? So we found another group of Afro Mexicans and uh, this is their business right here, but it's uh, closed right now. Como estas todo mundo? Como se llama mi reina? Yo me llamo Maria Luisa. Okay, cuantos años tu familia vive aquí? Yo tengo 52. 52? Como la 30, baby. <laughs> she says she's 52. It's like, no, but like, really, she got the 30 heat looking going on. Bueno, yo quiero conozco la cultura de los afromexicanos. Y como, ¿qué comida ustedes te gusta comer? Música, todo eso. Me gusta comer pescado. She likes to eat fish. ¿Y la música? Las mubias. Huh? Pura letra. Bumbia. ¿Es un afro, afro me, mexicano música? Bumbia. Mis abuelos uh -huh. que vinían, que los traían, los, este, los que traían a los afroamericanos, los traían donde venían antes, que los traían así como amarrados, como sí. clavos. Mis abuelos llegaron allá collante y de ahí vengo yo, de, la dependencia de ahí es mía, oh, okay, de los okay. meros afroamericanos, uh -huh. porque mi abuela era india uh -huh. y ya mi abuelo era afro. De América. De, de Coyá, llegaron ellos a Coyante. Ajá, llegó ahí, ahí los bajaron porque ellos, tra ellos trabajaban en esos barcos así. Pero ¿dónde él llegó? Del, uh... De los traían. Me traían el, como trabajadores, los traían a ellos, pues como antes que los traían así. Posible este. de África. Ajá, puro de África. We're going to check out some of the music. Oh, bueno. This is the time. All right, so I, I feel like we got the point of the video, bro. So I just feel like people need to come to an understanding and put all this nonsense aside because it's like you said, it's not it's not doing no justice, not getting us nowhere. Whether you're looking at it from Tariq Nasheed's point of view or you're looking at it from American Cholo points of view, um, it's not getting us anywhere um, at the end of the day unless we come to an understanding that we've lived amongst each other for years. All right. So let me know what you guys think in the comments, man. Uh, hit that like, comment, and subscribe button. And until next time. And also send me some videos you guys want me to um, react to. Maybe you guys thought I was wrong. You know what I'm saying? If you did, let me know in the comments. Send me a video. I'm going to be adding the link to this video and to a few others in the uh, comment section. And let me know if you guys want more content on history, man. It's your boy, uh, Adney Subs, a.k.a. Wingo Gang, man. Holla at me. I'm out.